I think open BIM is actually a fairly simple concept, which has probably been overcomplicated sometimes. So it's basically BIM, but instead of BIM being locked in or tied into a, a vendor, a proprietary vendor, it is the practice of BIM in a way that uses things like uh, standards and international standards in order to use many different technologies so that you're not tied into one vendor. And that's all Open BIM is. It's saying, why don't we do BIM in a way that we can collaborate with many different technical tools rather than have being stuck on one piece of technology or one piece of software. So that's all Open BIM is. It's really not harder than that. It's pretty light, but if you go to the uh, OSArch wiki, which I have open here, you can visit it by going to wiki.osarch.org. Uh, they have a page saying, learn about Open BIM. And it's a fairly relaxed page right now. And it just copies a couple of principles that you can find on other websites like uh, Building Smart for example, but really there's a lot of content on this online and they all have are variations on the same theme. They don't differ too much. And they all say things like, we want to interoperate. We want to use uh, standards that are agnostic of a single vendor. We want to exchange data and collaborate. And uh, all of those concepts are, are things you'll hear about OpenBIM. And that's pretty much all it is. And um, truth be told, OpenBIM should be what we should all be doing already. It should be. I know we, we all aren't. Not all of us are, but it's probably what we should be. Because, okay. yeah, because one of the purposes of BIM is to collaborate with other people, with other stakeholders. And the whole point of doing BIM in a large scale is so that your data can be used by other people and mm -hmm. can be used for a very long time or extended across technologies. And in order to do that, you should probably be doing open BIM. If you're not doing that, then you're probably just doing closed BIM. You're not really doing BIM. You're collecting building data and information in your own way, which is, which doesn't work well with anybody else. So it's probably, we should say the normal situation should be open BIM. And um, people who don't follow these standards are not really doing BIM at all, I guess. Is there anything more to it? Is there anything practical that we can implement or any implementation that we can practically use in our work that takes it from a concept to something practical? Yes. And um, what turns it from a series of concepts to something that will, will benefit you is by adopting certain standardized agreements. So the whole point of BIM of open BIM is to create data in a way that can interoperate and collaborate. And to achieve that, you need to follow standards. And there are different types of standards. Some are technical standards, like um, there are, are certain types of file formats you can use, or there are certain types of, the technical word is schema, but maybe a, a way of, of, of saying it simply would be an agreed way of describing things. You know, mm -hmm. here is what we call a wall. Here is what we call a door. And and anytime somebody says, oh, what, what do you, you know, what are the things we call walls and what are things we call doors? You can pick up a document. You say, read this document and it will tell you what are walls and what are doors. And as long as you follow that, your data becomes more and more organized. So following these standards allows you to follow the concept of open BIM. But it's not just formats and it's not just um, agreements of what things are called. There are also things like agreements of what relationships things have. And um, one of the big concepts of BIM is that things are called objects and objects have relations to other objects. So rather than a lot of geometry, you have a wall and a door and the door is inside that wall and this wall is inside the story of a building and so on. So there are international agreements of what types of relationships can exist between objects. So you can say things like this door is in this wall and other people can say, oh yeah, I get that. You know, it, it seems so simple, but unfortunately uh, computers, you need to explain all these really basic stuff to them to, to help them to understand. So that's why we need these, these standards. There are also workflow standards. So the process of creating data, the process of exchanging data, there are standards that um, describe what those are that we can follow. And if we follow them, it makes it easier to uh, shift resources so that one person can pick up where you left off or they know exactly quite confidently what data is going to be sent to them when they ask for something. And, and when you put all of these standards into practice, people work together a bit better.